following is an illustration of a pitot tube. The pitot tube was first designed by Henry de Pitot around 1732. The pitot tube can be used to measure air speed. To illustrate, let's assume air flows horizontally. After passing through the pitot tube, some of the air moves into the tube, others flow through its surface. The movement of air entering the tube will decrease until it stops at point 1. The resulting pressure is stagnation pressure. This pressure can push mercury into the manometer. The pressure is P1. At point 2, the air flowing through the surface has almost the same speed as the speed entering the tube. This is the air speed that will be measured. The speed is V2. Using the concept of static pressure, the pressure here is static pressure. The magnitude is P2. Stagnation pressure is greater than static pressure. So the pressure P1 will push the mercury in the manometer greater than the pressure P2. For example, the mercury on side P2 is higher by H0 than the mercury on side P1. Using Bernoulli's law, P1 plus half of rho V1 squared plus rho GH1 equals P2 plus half of rho V2 squared plus rho GH2. The value of V1 is 0. Because the distance between H1 and H2 is very small, the value of H1 is equal to H2. This equation becomes P1 equals P2 plus half of rho V2 squared. To simplify it, V2 is equal to the square root of 2 times P1 minus P2 over rho. Now pay attention to the manometer. P1 is equal to P2 plus rho 0 GH0. Rho 0 here is the density of mercury. Thus, V2 is equal to the root of 2 rho 0 GH0 over rho. This is the equation of the pitot tube. Knowing the density of the fluid, the density of mercury and the height of the mercury on the manometer, we can calculate the air speed. Hope it is useful. And, don't forget to watch the next video. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love, but the fake is, if you wanna play tough, and wanna hate